Hey folks, I'm Rob, and we're back with another Player 2 Plays. Yes, it's still the journey through Atari 50, the anniversary celebration, and today we reach one of the hard parts, the Atari Jaguar section. Um, the Jaguar has a bit of a reputation. I don't mind it. I think it's an interesting console, and it's got some interesting games, some of which are here in Atari 50. Um, we'll just do a quick flick through the collection now. Um... So, let's see how we go. I'm going to open up with Atari carts because that sort of grounded a little more. Something that's a little more familiar, being that it's a take on the, the karting racer, as inspired by Mario Kart. So this is 1995, which is closer to the end of the Jaguar's life than its start. And i got to say, right up, it's the it's, it's certainly, certainly impressive enough from its opening presentation. Go with Bentley Bear. Hero of Crystal Castles, who's sort of the all-rounder. Boragus Cup, <laughs> as in Atari's location. Tempest Cup. <laughs> like, the music really gives me 16-bit um, vibes. And so, yeah, you... I just had a quick play of this early. I, I've not played this. I never saw this. Um, so, I'm still basically as new to this as you might be watching this. You know, you've got the... You've got the most of the, the, the staples of a kart racer at the time. But, you know, for all the hype of 64-bit power... Uh, <laughs> No, we could say that no. I don't think it really shows 64-bit power well. I mean, it's very smooth. Nice and silky smooth road uh, animation. And the way that there's some height there, but, you know. You know, another year or two before um, Mario Kart 64, which, you know, put things into 3D and whatever else. Um, Yeah, you can sort of see that it's fun to play, but it's not quite impressive, if you know what I mean. And I don't know if it's just because I'm on the easiest of the cups, but that was a bit of an, a doddle of a course. I do love the um the skybox and the and the horizon graphics. Those are quite nice. First race down. With commanding lead there. As we go into the second. I don't know how many races there are on a cup, I presume five. Most of the time, there's like five. We've got to avoid the water there because, hey, ice water. Um, yeah, you know, it's, you basically have an accelerate. Uh, you do have a brake. You have to use item control. I see AI was getting stuck there. I can see them getting stuck there. Can't be regained first. Okay. There's a little less. I mean, I appreciate you don't really have the weapons aspect. I've sort of always been a mixed bag about that on Mario Kart, so blue shells. But, yeah, it's... it plays alright, it's... I think it's just because this is just a slower, a slower cup that things aren't quite as exciting. But, you know, it's... it's a solid kart racer. I hear, you know, this has a positive rep by a lot of people, and I can see why. It's... much closer that time around. Okay, race three. Oh, the hills. Alright, that's one thing that they've got new here because they've. So you've got. You've got that sort of. Um, ooh, 
<laughs> you have got that sort of uh, like the breaking up with the corners there. I love it's 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 such a simple thing. It's still you know mostly a two D experience, but having those hills throw you up into the air for a moment, give you a little bit of airtime. Kind of dig that. And of course, you know it won't be long until the we get the generation of kart races that had you know pure three D. You know your Mario Kart sixty fours and the like. But yeah, anyway, keep going through. There we go. That one. That one was. That was a much nicer race than that uh, ice course. That's for sure. All right. Race three done. And on to race four. I do wish there wasn't that. Maybe the tracks aren't that long, so I don't think they're that hard to learn, really. that lead which is nice all right around the corner that's on that final lap now yeah well there we go that's uh a fourth race done this feels anticlimactic. I don't know about you watching this, but we've gotten to race five, and I hope this is the last race of this league, so we can maybe bump up to a couple. Of right at this point. No, in the last lap, no. We still got it. That's the important thing. Come on. Oh, 
Well, that's just... The last corner. Lost it on the last corner. What a tragedy. What a travesty. What a travesty. I mean... What a mistake. But I think you still... We had such a commanding lead that we haven't lost the, um, the cup yet, but we're now towards the back. All right. <laughs> okay, well, taking shortcuts ain't always the smart move. Or cutting the trap ain't really the smart. Slap now. All right. I do like that. There's no, um, you know, you don't have to oh, finish in the fix the place. I don't know. I have to check the manual to confirm. But it's sort of like you've got the league thing going on, which makes sense for a game like this. You play all the races, you win, or you don't. Okay. Hey, we came first. All right, so that is Atari cards. I mean, we can move on to the next cups, but oops. I want to sort of keep showing off some more games here, so let's move on. And one that's become a bit of a favorite of mine. It's not the, it's not an amazing, like the best or whatever, but I've really kind of, really got my claws into Cybermorph. Um, I kind of like this kind of shooter. And this was the Jaguar's packet. So, in the era where you've got, you know, rail shooters like the original um, Star Fox, Star Wing, it's probably a bit, a bit different. Anyway, let's go through. So the idea is you clear these systems. There's five systems. Here's the first. And you've got to collect all the pods. So let's go in. Return to control of this world to us by capturing all the pods and bringing them home. The idea is these pods contain weapons and whatnot. So, we deploy. Good luck. The idea is we need to find the pods. The radar in our top corner helps us with that. And there's one right there. Well done. So we want to go through. Now a lot of people will rag on this game because of, um, you know, it being featured in a few other internet creators well done. kind of videos but well done. I think you're, you're open to what it is it's actually quite a neat little game well done. Ouch. Right, we've got to be careful now because we've lost all our shield uh, so at the bottom there we've got slots for our weapons And then our speed and shield bars. Ooh, there's a pod. Let's get the pod. Let's also stop first so we can get the pod. Well done. All right. Now radar's giving us pointer to an enemy as well as a pointer to a pod. Again, we are so low on energy. We don't, really want we don't want to lose a life, which is just what happened there. And then that enemy drops drops a uh, power up to recharge our shields. All right, one more pod left. There it is. Well done. 
now, now open. let's get to that portal which the indicator points us to. We've completed the first wall. Alright. Let's go to Codex. Find the pods, grab them and get out quick. I mean, for what this game was Good doing, luck. like, it's still not quite 64-bitness. Well um, but it's still impressive to see this kind of open world in 3D on a console. Yeah, this kind of stuff, um, if you're playing, you know, Good work. this era, you'd probably have a game like this on a 16-bit computer. Even PC would start again a little more powerful by this point. But those games would probably be far simpler in terms of, like, their world detail and probably nowhere near as solid a frame rate, so... Even though the draw distance is a bit... a bit short... Only one more. It's still kind of impressive. Avoid the ground. Well done. Portal now open. Someone around. Did someone around here, which means it's a bonus pod. Good work. There's the portal. Yeah, stage two done. Let's keep going. Look, great worms. They're plaguing the few survivors that remain after the invasion. Oh boy. Good luck. Teleporters. Avoid the ground. Ouch. Only one more. Well done. Portal now open. Well done. Ouch. Lost on that world. Okay, but we've got our pods. All right. Last few pieces of a secret project. Classic add flavor through through other means when you can't sort of add them by default. Good luck. There's some pods. Good. Ouch. I wasn't sure that weapon was. We've... You gotta be impressed they've got, they've got like little bridges and stuff. Then you do something stupid like that. <laughs> I, like, this game is, you know, it's rough. Um, there is a sequel, uh, Battle Morph, but that, I'd say if you were to play this on original hardware, you would be, you would basically be hocking a kidney to get a Jaguar. But the sequel, Battle Morph, is on the Jaguar CD, which is like hocking two kidneys. That didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> But I quite like I quite like Cybermorph. It's 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 not the best game you'll find. It's definitely not the best game in the Jag selections here. But it's kinda okay. 
and I mean it scratches an itch that I have so it's one that I keep going back to um Ruiner is the only pinball game in the pack so let's let's look at how pardon me how pinball translates to the Jaguar Oh, good old logos and whatnot. Um, so there are two tables here. Ruiner, which is sort of in a, a you know, nuclear war sort of kind of set up, and Tower, which is a weird fantasy thing. Mark at five, four, That's... three, two. Current status, DEFCON 5. So this does the usual. I... Again, so I've never really played this much. Um, and yeah, this sort of like early to mid '90s era of pinball for me was always devised by um by the by the games by Dice. Um, yes, that Dice, Pinball Dreams, Pinball Fantasies, and whatnot. Um, this has some nice big tables. Um, this one actually has a has a table off to the, a secondary table off to the side that I haven't quite gotten to yet. And the the other table tower is massive in terms of just like a big vertical table yeah so I've got to haven't hit that ramp to go there yet nice I'm not doing great um Earth Venom, Defcon 5. Ooh, nudging action here. Oh, we made it to the other table. Well, that's the first time I made it onto the second table, second table half, so, hey, surprise. It's funny, just something to reflect on when looking at these Jag Jaguar games is, a friend made a comment um, elsewhere that they sort of see the, the Jaguar as like, that if you're comparing this to being like the polished kind of stuff you're getting, you know, on a SNES or Mega Drive or whatever, or PlayStation by this point, that you're looking at it sort of the wrong way. That it's sort of, if you look at this from an angle of, of, home, of home computer games, and that makes an odd bit of sense. Um, That one's definitely the tougher of the two tables. All right, so that's game over. So it should should let us bump out, and we could check the and check the other table now. So having to restart the whole process is a bit silly, though. But and that title screen is kind of bland. Won't lie, that's just a really bland table selection there. Just like a couple of labels. Anyway, so this is Tower, the second table. And this does the thing where the table um, has like three smaller subtables that you move down vertically. So now, oop, now we're at the bottom table. So we're not careful. Now we'll drain our ball. Um, Oh well, first drain. So 
so this is, again, I think, like, I'll admit, I'm, I'm enjoying this, but this is not... That L in bonus multiplier there looks not quite like an L. That might just be me, though. Lol. <laughs> I, was, I was having a, I played this not too long ago and had a decent enough run. I'm not having that at the moment. Maybe it's because I have to also think about, about commenting and obs observing. Um, it is so, like, I've got to say this, for this table in particular, it's so very 90s in how it represents things and that may not be for the best. Oh. Might certainly have been a fate worse than definite in the pinball game. But, oh, come on, ratchet it, ratchet it up there. Okay. Right. No, you got downhill. Oh no, even more downhill. That is 
That is ruin a pinball. Um, the tower table, we just... I think we did better on the tower table than we did on um, the nuclear fallout one. All right. Oh, we actually got into it. <laughs> well, it doesn't save those anyway. Um, so now I'm at a an impasse because if you ask me what the best Jaguar game here is in Atari 50, it's this Tempest 2000. It's also probably one of the best games in the entire collection, and the fact that it's been made available to play for the first time, I think, is absolutely important. Um, but the problem is, if I sit down and play this, we're going to be here for like 40 minutes, another 40 minutes. So what I'll do, I'll do a quick... I can play and show a bit of it. Um, thankfully, one of the good things is you can actually select what level to start at. So Tempest 2000 is a... A, I mean, I guess you do call it a sequel to the uh, 1981 arcade game. The big difference is, I think the best way to sum it up is, it's turned up to 11. So, uh, this is good to start on. And so, like Tempest, the idea is that you complete each wave by shooting all the enemies. We can see one appearing. The big difference here is, now you have power-ups. And these really are sort of a ladder of power-ups you get, like the improved firing shot. We can eventually get a jump, which we'll probably get shortly if we don't miss any. That was our super zapper. You get one per level. Um, it recharges as you move levels. And then we did something silly like get caught. I think... The thing is, I'm not quite in the zone. When I usually play, I usually play from the start, so I've already played a few levels before seeing this one. So we've got the jump, which is one of the survival techniques for when you have enemies reach the edge of the web. I'm not, I'm not attuned to Tempest today. <laughs> um, I think it's because I haven't warmed up, because this level's got a few enemies that get introduced a few waves in. Like initially, oh, thank goodness a one-up. This game is quite generous with one-ups, thankfully. The original arcade Tempest is not. Um, all right. Yeah, we got the AI droid. A droid is the best. And those warps, you collect three warps, you get a bonus stage. Um, we'll see if we can get that to happen, but I don't know based on where we are. Like, this game could take you a long way to play through because you basically work through, there's a hundred stages all up, and you can, it will let you start a new game from stages you've beaten. Um, it's a bit filly to do, especially in the, it's not too bad in the actual game, but here in the collection, you have to remember to use the save state feature because it doesn't actually emulate the cartridge saving, unfortunately. Cool, we got our jump. Oh, nice. I always don't quite get the conditions for that power up uh, to trigger an end of an early end to the stage, but I'm so glad it's there. Anyway, we managed to accrue some more lives now, which is nice. So yeah, my goal is to not spend too much time with this. Just because I love this game so much. If I had to pick like one game out of all 100 in the collection that you've got to try, it's this. Because um, it's never been made available outside of, the, of this age. Like, I mean, alongside the this Jaguar original, it was also released on the PC and on the Saturn, and then reworked on the PlayStation um, with some contra contra controversy. Um, and sure, there's the modern the modern follow-ups. Um, you know, you can play Tempest 4000 on modern platforms as well. Um, but I think it doesn't quite feel as good as this. Is how I'd say it. 
Tempest 4000 doesn't feel quite as precise. Alright, another warp and another stage cleared. So got the warp, beautiful. And if you have to collect the power up on the way out like that, you stop the AI well, you can get the AI droid from the, the next stage. But now this is one of the bonus stages. There's two types you'll encounter. And the goal of this one is really fly through the rings. Um, which might look easy at first, but um, as you progress through the bonus stage, everything will speed up. You can just see there's a ring ahead that has a speed up there. And and also the pattern starts getting more and more tricky. So you've just got to be just careful with your movements on the controller. So you don't get uh, you don't overshoot, which can happen if you're a little, if you're hitting stuff a little frantically to try and line up, especially once the speed ratchets up a bit. But right now it's still nice and chill. Nice way to take a breather after a um, frantic section of wave to clear, clearing out a frantic wave. Now this next one is going to push us up off the surface there. I believe it's Jupiter. That was, it's like a, a texture of Jupiter's surface that's used for this for this section. A bit more of a speed boost. Ah, oh, more lives. Yes. But also a bit oh no because <laughs> yeah I don't really want to sit down and keep this going forever. Ooh. All right, we're getting to the point where we're going to get bumped up slightly higher. And there's a speed boost coming up. And we'll snake our way down. And another down low one. And even lower. All right, speed boost. Through that. And another speed boost. And another speed boost. And there's the end. So we get a bunch of points. And we skip five stages, so that's a pretty good deal. Which depending on where we are. Yes! So each group of webs is hollowed by sort of like the first batch of blue, this second batch is red. And it's introduced to some horrible enemies. Um, like that one. I mistimed that one. You gotta watch the pattern of it of it oscillating. And you can also hear the noise when it shoots. And once it shoots, you can go in and take it out. Which is important because that one, that one is the one that does the most damage, I, think, I would say. And I got blasted by one of the demon heads. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Sometimes it's still, it's still surprising. It's like, oh, you can exit early. Anyway. That's one of the cool thing about the emulation here in Atari 50 is the actual jag does not run this smooth. Um, That was silly. <laughs> but that stage is a little tough because of how tight it is. How tight the web is. You've sort of got to like really get used to it. <laughs> oh. Such marvelous. Such marvelous challenge. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I didn't have to jump. Now I do. Something I really love in playing this is just... Um, the little dots of the enemies as they approach the web are always the same color or their type. So as you move through the, the different level sets, the enemies themselves um, start appear, start looking different. But they sort of have the same function. Um, and what that means is you could sort of get to grips with how they... You get to grips knowing that the red ones are the sort of the flippers. The blue ones are the ones that will split into multiple flippers when shot. Um, I can't remember their name off the top of my head right now. And so forth. The yellow ones are going to be those those ones that fry the, the, the lane if you're not careful. Green ones will be the... Yes, I know, Droid. I haven't seen you in a while, old friend. There is some style for this game that just the Jaguar just made possible in the weirdest way. Darn it. Once you get the AI droid, things become so much easier. It really helps you. Of course, you know, every stage, everything gets reset, which I really like from an angle of... It makes a lot of sense to do that, because most shooters would probably have you keep your power-ups, and it would be kind of boring to already start the stage powered up with the AI droid and all of that. But having to get it, earn it, climb the ladder and get everything back again really adds to sort of the tension that you get here. Yes. 
such a great part to work with. Oops. <laughs> ah. low on lives which is good <laughs> good and bad i mean bad for me but good for you because it means we can hopefully drink draw this to a close shortly um. this is normally a game that is like one of those zone games for me where i can just zone out to enjoy and just not interrupt ah, well there we go it's trippy seeing that render as fast as it does, because on the original hardware, it does not animate that smoothly. <laughs> so, Tempest 2000 is an utter joy to play. It is one of the standout games here, not only in the selection of Jag, um, Jaguar games included, but just in general. Um, it's been widely called one of the Jaguar's best games, and there's plenty of reasons why. It was, you know, the work of an artiste. It's a marvellous, marvellous game that is well worth playing. And as always, I'm going to say, you know, Atari 50 is an amazing collection that is absolutely worth your time to check out. But I am going to leave it here because it's been quite a bit longer than I normally like to, to make these videos. Um, so, yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the Player 2 channel for more Player 2 plays by myself and the rest of the team. Uh, do check the main Player 2 website at player2.net.au for reviews, news, and all of that good stuff, and plenty of more coming down the pipe. So, thank you all very much for watching. <laughs>